one of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name. No? Ya Alim, the one who gives knowledge. Yeah? The possessor of knowledge. He's asking the question. Did anyone hear? Everyone heard? Oh, no, you heard, right? Allah's name, one of his names is Alim. Alim. I have to say otherwise, they get upset with me. He is the one who creates and he is the one who possesses that. And Allah's attributes, there is no beginning and there is no end. So where ilm is concerned, knowledge, there is no beginning and there is no end. So you cannot even say it changes. It's according to his nature, which is always expanding and expanding. And Allah can give that knowledge to anyone whom he pleases. Allah is Malik, Ya Malik. He is Malik al-Mulk, but he can give it to whomever he pleases. He can raise whoever he pleases, he can put it down whoever he pleases. This is the ayat that we're reciting in our zikr. There's a secret to that too. Why that is there. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who's possessing this. There's no beginning, no end, and He gives it to whomever that He wants to give. Everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, it is for the sake and for the pleasure and for the honor of the Holy Prophet. That is the divine protocol from Allah to the Holy Prophet. No one, no prophet even goes directly to Allah. It is through the Holy Prophet You understand? The prophets, their shahadat is like our shahadat. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Their ummat, their nation, their people, their shahadat is La ilaha illallah Adam Rasulullah, Nuh Rasulullah, Musa Rasulullah, Isa Rasulullah. But the shahadat of the prophets is the same as our shahadat. This is one of the many uh, secrets and honor that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to the Prophet and to the Ummat of the Prophet. That when the Prophets they saw the honor that Allah was going to give to his Ummat, to his nation, to his people, us, until Judgment Day, everyone living, those Prophets they were willing to give up their prophethood. We don't know what honor we are having, but we need those ones, our sheikhs, to remind us. Yes, that's there. So when you are young, it is according to your capacity. When you are understanding a little bit more, your capacity for that increases. It doesn't mean that it changes. You understand? Let's not go into how it expands. For you to understand how that knowledge expands, you have to understand, understand its secret. Then it'll start expanding. Because with every knowledge also, there is a shariat and there is a hakikat of that knowledge. You understand? So it looks as if the shariat of that knowledge doesn't change, but your understanding of it will just grow and grow according to your capacity to understand that. But once you're understanding the shariat of that knowledge, then you'll enter into hakikat. And then that time is endless. The time is endless. And everything must point to Allah. Every knowledge must point. He is Yalim. That is his attribute. Which is why when the Muslims they discover knowledge that the, they took from the Greeks or they took from the Byzantines. I mean the Greeks and the Byzantines are the same. And they took from, let's say, the Persians. And all those other earlier civilizations that they've been there for thousands of years. When they had they took that knowledge, uh, they made that knowledge better. 
and they understood that it's coming from Allah too. They didn't destroy. So it's not like the Christians, they come into this, for example, this continent. There are people who have been living here for thousands of years. Sit down, sit down, quickly. So all that going on, sit down a little bit, 10, 15 minutes, and then after that you can run around. The Christians, when they come to this area, for example, there are people living here for thousands of years, correct? They collected knowledge too, right? For thousands of years, yes or no? In every area. Now they're discovering we must consult with the Native Americans how to control the wildfires in California, they are saying. How they were doing it is how we should be doing. We should listen to them more. But when they came and they colonized, they took over, which is common. People go and they take over. What did they do with this knowledge that was here? It is complete foolishness to just burn the knowledge and to destroy the knowledge and to say this knowledge has no use, whether it is by religion or it is by secular dunya kind of understanding. It's complete foolishness. Islam didn't do that, which is why it is completely different. And they came and they destroyed the languages, the religion, the culture, thousands of years, and the knowledge of how to live. They came here without even any knowledge how to survive. Yes, we're going to enter into that Thanksgiving season. Something very sick going on with people who are like that sick in the head, you understand? So, but when Islam was entering into all these different areas, entering to Iraq, into Egypt, entering into Persia, entering into parts of Greece, different empires that they are there, they always took it because they understand this is knowledge, it's different from ours. In fact, the desert Arabs, they had no knowledge. The biggest uh, gift was language. They have a couple more, but the, one of the biggest was language. You understand? Then Allah gave them through their appreciation of language. Sit down, Hussein, you run one more time, I'm going to hang you from the ceiling. Quickly, sit down. One after another after another. So, when they took all these knowledges and understanding that this knowledge it is teaching them something about this world. This world is created by who? By Allah. And they say it is different from us, but this is knowledge. And we don't know this knowledge. But we're looking, this knowledge made them to grow like this, to grow like this, to grow like this. Put aside religion, you understand, we're talking about knowledge. They're not worshipping Allah, but they have this high knowledge. It is stupidity to say, we must destroy this. Wahhabis, they're doing that. But not Muslims. Because they say everything is coming from Allah. So now, they have to say, La ilaha illallah. Where is the ilah that is in the knowledge? They have to say la to whatever is illallah in that knowledge, they have to retain and they have to make it better. And they made it better and they made it better and they made it better. They didn't just take and copy, they made it better. Hmm? So, what we are going to do with the knowledge that we get. One of the things that Shaykh Hani is saying, don't learn too much these days, which so many people, they have problems with that. But Shaykh Maulana is saying that. So many people, some, they like us, and then later they discuss, oh, we're saying don't concentrate on this kind of zahir, knowledge of especially religion, Zahir knowledge of religion. Don't go trying to become uh, alim. Don't try to become know enough that is going to... Uh, people are... 
In order to live in America and to know the rules of America, you don't need to be a Supreme Court judge. Yes? You don't even need to, have a, to be a lawyer. Why? Because there's enough lawyers. The world doesn't get better with more lawyers. It gets worse. You need to have a life. You need to have a vocation, a calling, a reason, a, a motivation. And you go according to that. So when we say, don't concentrate on this, people are attacking us. I'm saying we're against the noise. You say, idiot. I'm saying, oh, you idiot. When you go into the School of Engineering and you don't study botany, huh? and in the School of Engineering, you're an engineer, right? Somebody comes up to class and is reading you know, books on botany, on plants and everything. Teacher is going to say, get out. Stop all this. Yes or no? Are we accusing that teacher of being against the botany? No. But people lose their minds because their ego is in control of that. They don't understand what the Evliyas they are saying. We are here studying ourselves, knowledge of yourself. It is a very important, very difficult, very high knowledge, knowledge of yourself. Because the Prophet says, the one who has knowledge of himself, the one who knows his Lord, who knows himself, he knows his Lord. So we're studying ourselves. So when you're studying yourself and you're coming in busy with other things, of course the shaykhs are going to stop that. But people are very arrogant and they're very stubborn and they're looking just to argue, just to prove themselves right. We have no time for that. So, constantly, you know, in the old days, the dervish, the Sufis used to carry a mirror, you know, everywhere they go. They have a mirror and they're going to look at themselves. Uh, some people, they're not even looking at me. How are you going to learn? They look at themselves and they studying themselves. They study themselves. I'm feeling like this. This happened. How do I look? What is the manifestation of that? There is. Because if you're not aware of yourself, well, that time your enemy can just take you down. Just by one word, it can take you down. We are so weak. Just by one thing, just by one whisper. So they used to do that. They used to watch themselves. But we are here to learn, to study, to watch ourselves too. You don't want to. Then what are you doing here? You don't want to be an engineer. What are you doing in the School of Engineering? Everyone, am I forcing you? No. But you are here, you spend a lot of time, you did a lot of things. You're learning, but you're just getting over this. You know, there's an exam, right? There is an exam. In fact, every year there's an ex a few exams every year. Especially in that kind of system, you have two exams you know, midterm and at the end of the year. What makes you think there is no exam in this way? Especially, what do you think in the holy days and nights there is no exam? And what we have to do when our ego is going crazy, when we understand what it is, go against it. Don't listen to it. Go against it. That time, you'll win. If you listen to it, then you're going to lose. Don't. Oh, you're making it very easy. I squeeze people a little bit here and there on holy days and nights. They already get very spoiled and get very upset with me. What is this? It used to happen every single holy day and night when Shah Effendi was around. Uh, am I doing it just to copy? No, because I'm seeing something. And when in these kinds of situations, if something like that happens, like that, it is my duty to say, and the others are wa not only watching you, they're watching me too. You understand? So, we need to learn. We were getting squeezed so much in these days. Oh, Chef, and he was so nice to everyone. All the guests coming in, all the tourists coming in, he was giving nice sober and everything. 
but he would shoot daggers at me and Mustafa all the time. Not touching me, he's not touching Ali, never. Touching Mustafa, never. No, not Mustafa, Mesut. Yeah, all the time, never. But what do you want to do? What have I got to teach? I can only teach things that I learned. You understand? I'm not going to pretend to teach things that I'm reading from here and there. What I learned, what helps me. Then we'll see whether you are, that is working with you or not. It has to work. No? So, the whole thing again, what is stopping us from that knowledge? Ego. Stopping us. Ego. Your anger is stopping you. Your stubbornness is stopping you. Your envy is stopping you. Uh, what is the other one? I say envy and jealousy are the same, no? You go to school or no? I see where they say stubbornness. Anyway, he figured it out. What is it? Pride, arrogance. No? And it can come in different ways. And I know people are fighting. I know that within themselves. But I'm saying, look, you're fighting with a stick. Don't. I'm here to give you something else, maybe a gun. Don't fight with a stick. You, you're going to take a longer time. Huh? Allah forgive me, inshallah. El Fatiha. Amen.